Hello there and welcome back to the channel. I'm actually about to go into a massage parlor here. Uh, but uh, somebody cup. <laughs> but there's actually a lot of similarities between massage and raising multilingual children. So think about it. When you have a massage, you ha have all these muscle nuts in your body and uh, after exercise and after working you need to get those out of the way and this can also be a problem for your multilingual family that there might be some you know communication wrinkles that you need to iron out in order for the learning to get better so today we're gonna look at one particular aspect of a multilingual family when those muscle nuts get very tense and problems start arising and that is when the child doesn't want to speak one of your target languages. Okay, so here we are inside the room, the massage room. Let's just call it our language learning lab for today. Okay, thank you. <sighs> With this um, massage, I can feel the pressure is hard and you have to be careful to balance the pressure on your child as we go through the tip in this video so that you don't put too much pressure but you don't want to put too little pressure because then they will not live up to their potential. There are several reasons why your child might be silent but before we even get into that uh, I would like to mention that this applies to multilingual learning. If you're trying to learn, or if you're trying to teach your child a foreign language, then you should press the card. I will put that video, the relevant video for that, in the card here. So see that instead. This video is for multilingual parents. So before we can address why, or before we can address what to do with children not wanting to speak the target language, we need to find out why they don't want to speak it. So let's go through some of those possible reasons. So the first one might actually be feeling embarrassed. If there are few people in your community that speak it, maybe you are the only family. Okay, that could make the child a little embarrassed about it. Maybe there are some peers in school that uh, think it's strange and the child now feels a little bit strange because of this. There might be several reasons for that. So you need to do a little bit of investigation. Could that be the case for your child that they feel embarrassed? Another common one is that they don't feel confident enough to speak the language. Maybe this is a language or the language that they are not sure about. Maybe they know the other languages that you're teaching them more, so they feel less confident. Oftentimes, it's just because they understand, but they might not be able to express everything. It's pretty normal to have a higher level, a higher level of language skills when it comes to understanding, uh, rather than when it comes to express express yourself. And I mean, when I walked into this massage parlor. I spoke, I started to speak Thai, but when I wasn't able to, I switched to English. 
and then I realized they weren't able to, so I switched back to Thai. But the point here is that if you as an adult prefer to speak, uh, you know, the language that you know the best, then why should your kid be any different? Okay, so now we're going to talk about the third reason that your child might not want to speak your target language. Maybe they feel like this language is not used a lot. It's just not that useful. How can this be? Okay, maybe you live in the United States and obviously English is your first language, but then you have one parent maybe from Spain or from Mexico or something like that and speak Spanish. Okay, so you want to teach your child both languages, but maybe they don't learn Spanish in school, so they don't feel comfortable speaking this. And since they might be speaking English with the most people, then why should they learn Spanish? They get along just fine with English. So this is a big problem with in our family. So like I might have said before, um, my name is Bill and I used to teach language to children for a decade. And now me and my daughter Selena, we have this YouTube channel where we help parents whether that is getting better at a foreign language or whether it's, you know, iron out wrinkles or muscle knots in your multilingual family. And the problem that I had with Selena is that Norwegian is a very rare language. We don't really use it outside of Norway, obviously. Only five million people speak that. So I think, even though I never asked her directly, I think that she might think that the value of that language is not similar to English or Thai, that she will see and use every day. So now that we know the reasons that your child might be choosing to be silent uh, with one of the languages, we should ask ourselves why the child feels that way. And I think maybe 95% will be too little input in that language. Ask yourself, did you have enough input? Did you have enough reading? Did you have enough speech? Did you communicate with your child enough? This is a huge challenge when we have multiple languages because there's only 12 hours or so that we communicate with them. So. If you have three languages, like I have, then there's not that much time and they spend some time at school and they have, you know, they're not home all the time. So it's a challenge. But what can we do? What can we do about this? How can we increase the input in that language? So what I did was that I realized that her Norwegian was lagging a little bit behind. I started to read for her in Norwegian. Uh, and I, I cut out like English as much as I can. So every day I will read for 20 minutes, at least up to 30, 40 minutes. And remember that books have a much larger vocabulary than day-to-day -day speech. So they get a lot more from reading than they would get from a day-to-day -day conversation. So this is really good. If you have some family and friends living in a different country, call them once in a while, exchange some language and make sure that they, that your children communicate with them. So not only to learn language, but to stay in touch with their relatives is very important. So they don't lose that touch and thus lose the language. One more thing is obviously to be patient. It's going to take time and when you have, for example, if you have three languages, you just, it just takes a lot of time. But over the years, or in at least like one year, within a year, you can see the progress. 
Um, so the important thing is that you just keep at it. And one other thing that you can do is to alternate the focus. Because you cannot, if you're, if you teach a child like three or four languages, you can't have full focus on all those languages all the time, which is natural. You have to shift focus and there are different ways of doing it. Obviously, it depends on your family situation, what language is the most important and, and what's your goal with this multilingual learning. But in my family, what I do is I will just em put emphasis, put focus on the language that is the weakest. So when Selena was younger, I would speak like English one day and then Norwegian the next day and then alternate like that. But now, when I see that one language lag behind, I will focus fully on that uh, as much as I can. Sometimes she asks me, Daddy, can you speak English? And then I will do that. But other than that, I will choose the weakest language to focus on. I can see from the treatment today that I have a lot of problems because it hurts. Uh, so just like you should go to your Thai massage. Now I haven't been here for one year, so you should go regularly. Maybe every three months is probably I the sweet spot for me. So this is the same for your kid. You need to encourage them, but in a gentle way and also in a way that is like positive and, you know, instead of saying things like instead of saying things like oh if you do this language lesson i'm going to give you a chocolate try to give them some other reward maybe they have a favorite language maybe they can watch a video or a movie in the favorite language if they do well with the target language that way we are not bribing them uh, and and it, it's much better for the future it's going to be much more difficult for you as a parent in the future if you have to bribe your children to learn as uh, you know like one of the languages that you teach them okay so the massage is finished and i learned something okay if i tell you what i learned about massage maybe you can tell me what you learned about language learning for kids so I realized that I need to do this more often. Um, every three months would be nice. Uh, it's been one year since I did a massage last time. And that way the body gets too tense so you, they can't really fix the problem um, when you wait that long. Okay, what about you? Did you learn anything about our or from our conversation earlier today are you giving your child the right feedback are you being positive or are you being negative sometimes are you talking with them often enough about the learning strategy the progress things like that are you angry with them when they don't speak the target language <laughs> that can happen it's normal so tell me in the comments what did you learn from this conversation